Christ's Letters Continuation of Letter 3 Will you say then that the Father is angry with the goats and will not protect them? Or will you rather say that just as the shepherd cares for his sheep and would care for the goats if they would allow it, the Father loves sheep and goats equally but is powerless to protect equally because of the goat's natural behavior? Also, consider the feeding habits of sheep and goats. Sheep are content to eat grass only, for which their stomachs are perfectly designed, but the goat will eat anything he comes across, having no respect whatever for his constitution. So is it with people who have no regard for what they will feed their minds with, since they have no fixed goal or clear purpose. <clears throat> like goats, they do not recognize when mental food is harmful or is taking them in the direction they should not go in their daily lives or whether it will lead them into harmful myth or dangerous fallacy. <clears throat> they roam picking up the mental equivalent of brambles, old shoes, bits of cloth, leaves, thistles, weeds, for they lack good sense. A man called out to me, Master, what if a person who is a sheep makes a mistake and gets himself into trouble? Will the father then abandon him? I asked him a question by way of answering him. What does the shepherd do when one of his sheep fall into a pit or tumbles over a cliff or gets caught in brambles? I will tell you, the shepherd leaves his flock and swiftly seeks out the missing sheep and will not leave it until he has brought it to safety. So is it with the father. Not even a sheep can avoid doing wrong in one way or, or another, but rest assured that the father immediately responds to its bleeding and rescues it. <coughs> Excuse me. And if a goat should begin to behave like a sheep and heed the shepherd's voice, then he too will come under the protection of the shepherd and will be cared for even as sheep are cared for. So it is with you and the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Several voices called out, asking me to tell them what I meant by the kingdom of God. What I am telling you is unlike you have yet heard from any prophet at any time. Do not try to understand what I am saying by thinking of what you have been told by your teachers. They can only repeat from the, scripture, from the scriptures and have no personal knowledge of the kingdom of God or heaven. God is not contained within any one place but is everywhere as are the heavens and air above you. The Holy Word spoke truly when it says, In God you live, move, and have your being. For the kingdom of God is above, around, and also within you, and you can enter the kingdom of God. <clears throat> People shouted impatiently, But what is it? It is a state of mind and heart which is fully possessed by God, your Father. When you are in this state, the Father is the head of your body and directs everything you do and all of your life. Some of the people grumbled, how can that be? It is possible to be so emptied of self, of selfish desires, enmities, angers, jealousies, greed, vindictiveness, that only God is left in control within your mind and heart. What happens then? asked a woman. <clears throat> then you enter into the state of being which is God directed. It is altogether beautiful and glorious. It is love. It is generosity. It is caring for other people as you care for yourself. It is non-judgmental since you accept other people exactly as they are, knowing that they too are God's children and are equally in the Father's care. It is happiness beyond measure, beyond description. 
It is joy in the beauty of the world. It is, it is life unlimited and increased energy. It is health and it is the fulfillment of your every need before you even know that you have such a need. Why do the rabbis not tell us these things? Several voices complain. <clears throat> because I alone have seen the Father. I alone know how the world has been made and the laws of existence. And because I know all these things, you have but to come to me and ask, and I will reveal all that has been given to me. I tell you truly, as many of you as believes and understands and seeks to put my words into daily practice will be saved from the tribulation that mankind endures. <clears throat> you suffer because you do not know you do not understand how you have been created and the true purposes for which you were born. You were born to be sons and heirs of the Father. You were born to enjoy all that the Father is in itself and all that it can give you. But you turn your backs on all the glory of the kingdom and try to find pleasures in earthly things. Whilst you do this, you will never find the kingdom of God, nor enter into the kingdom of heaven. How shall we enter the kingdom? <clears throat> I have already told you. You enter the kingdom of heaven when you repent of all that you are in your heart and mind, when you take your evil to the Father and ask forgiveness and pray for the strength to be cleansed of your evil thoughts, words, and deeds, and you finally get rid of them. Then you may be sure that you are about to find the kingdom of heaven. When you have accomplished this, you will find that your attitudes towards others are changing. For the Father will be doing its love work within you. You will be free of the chains and thongs of evil desires and deeds which previously bound you and made you a captive in the world. More than this, you will find that the Father does satisfy your every need. A woman shouted, I have a need at this very moment. Master, I am hungry. The people laughed, but then several voices joined in, saying, We have been with you, so you, many hours. You made us walk and walk before you would consent to teach us. We have shown you, you were the, we are the good sheep. Will you not help us and satisfy our hunger? <clears throat> I realized that they spoke the truth and felt deep compassion for them. They had followed after me, not just for healing, but because they longed to know the truth as it had been given to me by the Father. I had told them that the Father satisfies their needs. This would be an opportunity to show them the power of faith and the power that is God. I would prove to them that nothing is impossible when you truly believe as I believe and perceive. I called my disciples to me and told them to find out if there were any present who had food. They found a young boy with loaves and fishes and brought them to me. I withdrew some way from the crowd and quietly contemplated the loaves and fishes, knowing that they were but God mind power, the substance of all matter, made visible. I knew that God mind power was limitless and powerfully active within my consciousness. I knew that the nature of the Father is the fulfillment of need. As I blessed the food, I felt the power flow fully through my mind, body, and hands, and I knew the people's hunger would be satisfied. I did not know how this would be. I just knew it would. I then took the baskets of food and told the disciples to distribute it, feeling absolutely certain that everyone would have as much food as they needed. As it was broken and passed around, so did it multiply itself until all the throng were fed and satisfied. There were several baskets of leftovers. In this way, I demonstrated that no matter whatever is visible within the universe is mind consciousness made visible through the vibration of the modes, which science terms particles. Changes in the vibration of modes 
Hence, changes in matter take place as a result of a powerfully directed, disciplined, focused movement, imagery in mind, consciousness, energy. When one acts purely out of a love consciousness to accomplish good for others, the only limits to the father love work within the world are the limits which man's mind sets upon that work. Such changes in matter can only take place when the consciousness of man is perfectly in harmony and united with Father Universal Consciousness. Although there were amazement amongst the people and my disciples, when the people were fed in this way, not one of them understood how such a thing was accomplished. They could only conclude this was the greatest miracle they had ever seen. It also confirmed their belief that I was the Son of God. Number four, the power of faith and belief. Another day, I was sitting under a tree outside Bethesda, surrounded by people who had brought their sick to be healed. As always, they marveled at the return of life and health to these people and wondered how such miracles could be done. Again, I tried to make them understand the power of faith. In the Gospels, it has been stated, I said that if a man had faith the size of a mustard seed, he would be able to move mountains. This statement is a misinterpretation of what I truly said and it reveals how little my disciples and Gospelers understood my teachings when we were on earth. If a person were to have faith the size of a mustard seed, what does that mean? How can you measure faith in such a way? Faith is faith. It is a power of total conviction in the mind, possessing the mind and cannot be restricted in size. Faith arising out of your need to believe in something because such a belief will serve your purposes in some way can be powerful and strong but never could it be estimated in size. Belief is even stronger. Belief is the offspring of hearsay and logic. Because you have heard something and had been convinced that what you have heard or read is true, you develop a deep belief in what you have heard. You believe it to be true. You believe in a total, complete way which defies contradiction. I was constantly telling the people, believe you will receive and you will receive. However, I knew at the time that it would be well nigh impossible for the people to ever have the faith which would cause miracles to happen, since no matter how much I might explain truth to them, they would still never have the intense knowing given me in the desert. But now as I relate in small measure the story of my sojourn on earth in Palestine, it is with, it is with the intention that you, my reader, will begin to perceive and understand the knowledge I was given during my enlightenment. My intention is to give you knowledge. Hearsay is, is when you are told something but you cannot really prove it is true. Knowledge is when you are told something or read something and because what you have now heard or read complies logically and realistically with all related items of knowledge already in your mind and you can understand and believe it in a realistic, logical way, the new information becomes knowledge. You know that what you now know is true. You have a sense of conviction. <clears throat> Up to this time, some of you had faith in Jesus Christ, but you have been like pre precocious children with much doubt. Ah, your faith has been partially blind and accepting yet interwoven with much doubt. Therefore, whatever you needed to be done for you, you depended on Jesus for the work to be accomplished. Whereas in fact, much of what you believe you have derived directly from Jesus has been your own faith in Jesus, made visible in the form of things asked for. Whilst this childlike faith is very important to your well-being, those of you who are capable of moving onward on the spiritual path to perfection must now reach a deeper level with true, with, of true knowledge of the relationship between mind and matter, mind and matter. 